Hey everybody, welcome to the next video in my army building series. <clears throat> this is going to be a brief video. I didn't cover it in the last one because I wanted to stay focused. The next big question after how to build an army, or possibly the first big question is, how do you choose an army? This is why I made the other video first, because while this may be the first question, it really should be your second question because the way you choose an army is by determining which army best fits the strategies that you use which is what I talk about in my first video pick a strategy pick a tactic use that tactic and the special rule that goes with that tactic and make it the focus of all the units in your army. Now, that being said, there are definitely armies in the game, therefore, that make better use of certain special rules than others. For example, I like poison. I think it's an ultimate, uh, uh, just a great special rule. Well, there are basically two armies in the game which really makes special, special, especially good use, that's what I'm trying to say, of the poison special rule. And that's what are going to be Tyranids and Dark Eldar. Okay, both of them, they, 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 I think the Tyranids make it use better because virtually every army in the game uh, can, can get the poison special rule. Uh, I just really like it. So, so that's how I chose them. Well, that's one of the reasons, obviously. You can go say, I like the fluff, I like this, and that's perfectly fine. But you'll end up at some point in time possibly being uh, faced with a dilemma, right? You, you really like Space Marines, the fluff in them, but oh, you really want a lightly armored, fast-moving army that can fly across the table. See, you have a dichotomy here. On one hand, you have the fluff that you like. On the other hand, you have the play style that you like. And maybe they don't always mesh together. I think over the years, I found that uh, players aren't really good at um, understanding that conflict. And so they get lost in the game. Uh, and quite honestly, the answer is don't play one army. I mean, if you're really into heavy competitive play, uh, pick the army that's best for the tactic style that you like to use. And if you're into fun style play, eh, who cares? Pick the army that you like. And you know, I like Tyranids and Sisters of Battle. I mean, how much diversion can you get between that? I like Sisters mostly for the fluff, but now I actually like them for the tactics. Because with the introduction of fortifications, um, the static defense army is now viable. In in the decades that I've been playing this game, you could never really have a static defense army. Now you can. And I really think sisters were designed with that in mind, uh, their new kind of codex that's only available in the Black Library. That's me. You know, I mean, in, in a 2,000 point game, one time I put down two fortresses of redemption or as i renamed it fortress of smeg you i'm because really seriously 2000 point game they're about 200 points so i spent 400 maybe 450 points and put them both down i have this table corner and i have this table corner and you <laughs> come and try to take them away from me you know i've got 60 sisters just regular battle sisters. I'm even going into HQs and everything else. That sitting in each one. Okay, two full squads in each one. Uh, two, four, six. Sorry, three three full squads in each one. Come get them. For me, it was fun. I then used the Seraphim as my rapid response force, and I had an Inquisitorial have an Inquisitorial detachment where I threw the Servo Skulls. Servo Skulls, 6th edition, very nice. Dark Angel players, ha! 
Don't even try. You've got, I believe, six. Never mind. Sorry. Different video. Uh, to, to get rid of the, the deep striking deviation and allow him go and take objectives and points and everything like that. But mostly I just held my two and then had every have people come to me. I also separate, I just take the, uh, the dedicated transports, even though they can't fit into them, and I just put them in front. And say, boom, go ahead, you know, you gotta, uh, go go run through all of these just, you know, five, six rhinos just sitting there. And then you got immolators and everything like that just lined out in front of the two fortresses with the sisters behind those. And for any idiot who wants to deep strike behind that, I had a couple, uh, you know, penitent engines and redemptia squads just waiting right there. Hello, how you doing? Go ahead, deep strike behind this because we will eat you. That, that's that's more tyrannids, isn't it? We will smite you. That's better. Um, but that's how I play them, and 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 I have no problem with that. Perfectly viable. Perfectly viable. Um, it's just a different play style. So, really, I don't think there's any any bad armies in the game. I really don't. And and you can't even really, when you look at it this way, you, you can't even say there's bad units in the game. Okay? Because how can you speak to every single strategy and tactic that an army list might be built around? The unit is based upon your strategy, what it can do and how it fits in. And without knowledge of that strategy... You can't judge the value of a unit. You can't judge its point cost. You can't judge anything about it, which somehow, however, most people have the magical ability to do because they just rattle off point numbers and somehow I've been able to judge whether it was good points or bad points, whether they're too costly or less costly, just generically speaking. And I'm like, wow, you've... You've got a special insight to a game that I've never been able to develop then because, you know, I, I can only see how this unit would work depending upon if I wanted to build a strategy about it. And if you sit there and say this unit sucks and I could say I could build a I could build an army list around this unit. I could look at the special rules in this unit, its capabilities and design a tactic, a strategy that would be able to be used on an army wide level that would make this unit workable under that situation. Why is that impossible? What unit couldn't you do that with? That's me. That's my that's my take on the game. Um, I'm definitely not saying, you know, it's the only take on the game or the only opinion. It's mine. It works well for me, and uh, it makes me a happy gamer. Definitely, it makes me a happy gamer because every time a new codex comes out, I'm not disappointed. I'm not, wow, this sucks. I get to look at it and say, hmm, what's changed? Hmm, what what new army units? All right, I'm going to take that back. I did have a this sucks moment once, and that was the release of 3rd edition. Because, and and, and the this, this sucks uh, came from the, I basically need twice as many models in my army. <laughs> so, so yeah, there it's very difficult to have a positive reaction to the concept of y you have to buy twice as many models. Uh, you you suddenly, you know, oh, my, my my army went from being 17 to 25 models to being 50 to 60 models and I'm like, well, crap. That's money. But that had nothing to do with strategy. Purely financial reasons. Um, <laughs> few people are happy to say, wow, I get to go spend more money. Yay, I'm excited. That didn't happen. So that was my exception to the rule. Sorry, a little rant there. I'll try to stay more on focus next time, but I'm still under 10 minutes. So I hope you like that in terms of how to choose an army and you're not stuck with just one. Pick one that you might like to fluff on and another one if you're more competitive that you like the tactics on. Personally, they're both fine. I hope you enjoy it. Keep watching. See you next time.